Hey guys, welcome to my channel here Liciously. It's been a while since I've last done another update on my channel and I apologize for that because I've just been very hectic these past few days, uh, these couple weeks. And I was actually even supposed to go to work today, but due to the weather, I actually couldn't go. Um, let me show you guys how it's looking right now outside. I mean, it's not too bad, but you know, I don't really want to drive when it's, when it's icy. Um, so I'm just home right now. And I decided to finally do an update for you guys on another video. I know that there's a lot of things to cover. There's a lot of topics that I really wanted to discuss. I just didn't have the chance to do so. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and I'm sorry for a lot of the people who I've actually not been able to respond back to. I've just been getting so many emails every single day and it's kind of hard to kind of balance out work and trying to um, you know, respond to every single email. But in today's video, I wanted to talk about something that a lot of you guys have been requesting. And I know that, as you guys are aware, we have been waiting for what seems like an eternity regarding any updates for Dr. Suji's research to curing baldness, uh, which involves hair follicle regeneration through stem cell replication. Now, for those who don't know what Dr. Suji's research, I'm going to give you guys a quick update. And I'm going to be linking the video in the description box at the, uh, and also at the end of this video so that you guys can kind of take a look and see exactly what his research is about. I feel like you guys should really uh, research him if you guys don't know who he is because he's actually one of the very few doctors who may end up coming with a cure for baldness. As of now, the only real cure, so to say, or treatment for baldness is either through medication or hair transplants, specifically FUT and FUE, which the only issue with that is that it can only provide a finite number of grafts into the areas that you want to get implanted. FUE is the procedure that I got, and I got about 1,700 grafts where they get each single hair follicle on the back and transplant it into the frontal portions or any regions that you're balding. FUT is the process where they actually cut a strip of flesh in the back of your scalp and then end up cutting your hair follicles in the back and then implanting it. So it oftentimes leaves a big scar in the back of your scalp and that's why I opted for the FUE. Um, it's a little bit more pricey, but I feel like a lot of people would choose to go with FUE, especially nowadays because it's gotten a lot cheaper and a lot of people want to end up shaving down their heads later down in the road, in, you know, like in my case, without exposing any scars in the back of the scalp that resemble a linear line. FUE is also going to leave scars, but it's going to be tiny dots, which can also be disguised using um, scalp micropigmentation. So it's not a big deal. It's more aesthetically pleasing than going with an FUT. So this illustration here shows a quick overview of Dr. Suji's research. There's two types of cells in the skin during the development of hair follicles in the fetal period. So when you're a baby, we have the mesenchymal and epithelial cells, and they communicate together to form a hair follicle. Now, what Dr. Suji tries to do is he's trying to get a small sample from the back of the scalp, the same manner how an FUT procedure works and the hair follicles are dissected to obtain the necessary cells, which are the epithelial and mesenchymal cells to be cultured and multiplied. Now, the optimum environment enables the cells to mimic the fetal skin environment, meaning that the two cells will communicate together to create a hair follicle. And once the two cells have been cultured, the cells would then be implanted into the scalp and they should grow into fully developed hair follicles. This means that you can end up being a Nord 50 and become a Norwood 1. This would technically be the next generation hair transplant with an infinite number of grafts. So the only difference would be you're talking about finite versus infinite because infinite, you can go ahead and culture the two cells and create hair follicles uh, versus the current technology right now, which only involves you extracting the hair follicles in the back of the scalp. So you can only move so many hairs. So, so far, Dr. Suji has actually managed to grow new hair follicles, uh, tear glands, and teeth in rodents using human hair follicle cells. And for those who are wondering about density, um, here's what happened. It says, to achieve hair follicle regeneration at hair densities of 120 or about 60 to 100 hair shafts per centimeter squared of normal scalp or an FUT treatment, respectively, 28 bioengineered hair germs were transplanted into a cervical skin circle with a diameter of one centimeter. At 14 to 21 days after transplantation, the bioengineered hairs were erupted at a high density of 124 plus or minus 17.3 hair shafts per centimeter squared. Now also within three weeks, the hair follicles implanted with the cell had grown in about 70% of the tested mice. 
And as most people already know, Regan found out how to control hair color and thickness as well. So you can essentially buy yourself a full scalp of hair that is thicker than it's supposed to be. So the good news, um, we really haven't really heard too much updates when it comes to Dr. Suji, but a publication by Dr. Suji and a couple of other Japanese researchers on the regeneration of complex oral organs using 3D cell organization technology was actually released last year in December 2017. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just read a, uh, a few paragraphs of what they were talking about. So he talks about having developed an organ germ method to reconstitute bioengineered organ germs and demonstrated proof of concepts for functional organ regeneration by orthotopic transplantation of the bioengineered germs, including the tooth, salivary gland, and hair follicles. And then he continues to say that this unique technology could achieve the precise replication of the developmental processes in organogenesis and organ size regulation adjusted by the cell-to-cell -cell contact length between the epithelial and mesenchymal cell layers, thereby enabling the development of many types of bioengineered organ germs such as teeth, hair, salivary glands, and lacrimal glands. Notable research has demonstrated the bioengineered 3D organ system from iPS cells and includes appendage organs such as skin, hair follicles, and sebaceous glands. So we actually also sent out an email. This is actually from one of the forums. Um, one of the uh, the fellow users actually sent out an email to Dr. Suji. And here is what his response said when it came to any updates. He said, Recently, we successfully developed an expansion method of hair follicle-derived stem cells, although the results are unpublished. We are now trying to challenge of the expansion of human-derived cells and plan to do the clinical application in humans in March of 2019. So what this means is everything seems to be going as planned and they've actually perfected it, the precise replication of the developmental processes in organogenesis pertaining to hair in animals and they just need to proceed the test on human trials now which is going to take place in March of 2019. Now Dr. Suji plans to make commercial release for masses in 2020 if all goes well but note that this is actually just going to be in Japan once safety is proven through March 2019 in their clinical trials on humans. Japan, unlike the U.S., can make commercial release, which means in order to get treatment, one would actually have to fly out to Japan to uh, get these treatments because it might take years and years before it becomes commercialized in the U.S. or anywhere else due to the strict FDA regulations. When it comes to costs, nobody really knows, but I feel like, you know, we can only imagine that's going to cost an arm and a leg. And we still have to be very patient and wait until the results of the human trials are conducted in March of 2019. And hopefully when everything just goes as planned in 2020, we don't know what month, but sometime in 2020, it's actually going to be released and we can actually start uh, proceeding with the research of Dr. Suji. So all in all, everything seems to be going as planned and sometime next year, they actually would need to start implanting the hairs into humans and not animals anymore because a lot of the research that a lot of doctors do nowadays, they all focus on animals and mice and rodents. So more, more power to the rodents. You know, they're never going to be able to go bald like us. But once we transition from animals to humans, I think the applications that they're actually using on the animals should apply to humans as well since the animals were receiving human-derived uh, cells and they're actually growing human hair. So I feel like I'm very optimistic with this. I just feel like we still just need to be patient. There's really nothing that we can do, but we can only hope for good news. Anyway, guys, hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos covering hair loss topics. Thanks, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.